gap below five minutes for the first time. Things are starting to swing in the direction of those behind in the peloton as far as today's events are going to concern. This is a very tough climb. Yes, Sean, we have a very strong group out front, but they're not all climbers, remember? No, not all climbers. And um, it's going to be an interesting one because um, it's coming to the point at 50 kilometres, just under the five minutes now. We'll have to see how well they can uh, negotiate this climb, the 10-man breakaway. They're going to lose a lot of the riders very quickly out of that 10-man group. And, you know, the best ones, like a Pirazzi, for example, uh, is going to stay out front with a number of other ones. Bose and Hagen as well should have no problem staying up in a breakaway. And then back to the main peloton, you know, will the peloton just continue on setting this pace or will there be a team? As we can see here, it's starting to form here, a number of teams, Ulrika, Green Edge, BMC, Garmin, Sharp, uh, all starting, uh, um, Belkin, starting to form on the front. Will there be some of the teams who will really up the pace here and put the pressure on? And if that does happen, well, then this advantage uh, will start to come down very quickly. Um, it's difficult to know what you know, the tactics is, and there's a lot of different tactics, I think, different teams here, but it looks like uh, the balance is in the, uh, in the peloton direction. Well, we're racing up to Marco Pantani's favourite training roads. Edwin Squire asked, Sean, of all the roads that you rode on as a pro, which of your favourite ones and which do you enjoy revisiting the most? Well, I think... Uh, the big climbs in Switzerland, um, the Tour of Switzerland, which we made, uh, which I made a number of times, you have really good road surface, you know, large roads, great, uh, great ascents and a great surface, uh, so it makes it uh, safer. Although the, the roads have changed since I have retired, it's a long time ago. Um, you know, if I look back in the Tour of France, for example, the uh, the Alps were always a better surface and an easier road. The Pyrenees, when you get warm weather, you always get this tar running down. Uh, the descent and that makes it so difficult because you're just in the sticky tar all day so uh, if you talk with the Tour of France definitely the Alps were better for me but of course now the roads have changed so much and the Giro you know I did take part very little once I took part in Giro started and did you know 10 days of racing so I haven't got that experience but we can see here in Italy south of Italy especially the roads you know are very worn and we've been talking about that for the last number of days the surface has been you know for a long time a lot of potholes but uh, uh, when you get the dry conditions, it makes it you know, so much more easy. But um, I think um, the worn-out surface is good when it's dry. It's certainly not uh, nice at all when you get the wet conditions. But when it's worn, it's a very smooth surface. But, of course, you know the uh, broken surface always makes it difficult on your bike. Peloton starting to ride. The gap going below four and a half minutes and the situation changing by the kilometre. 42.74 is the average race speed after three hours. It's been a fairly fast race so far, but we have the climbing to come. Just a little suggestion, that little shot we saw the break, that Stefano Pirazzi was getting ready to strike out. He is the man we expect to strike out early. And this is the situation behind. Everybody fighting for position now. Thanks very much for all your predictions and your comments on Twitter. It's very divided at the minute. A lot of people saying Quintana. A few people saying Evans because, of course, this is much more like uh, his climb rather than the very, very high ones in the Dolomites when he's likely to suffer a few losses. So hoping to capitalise on form now. Some people even saying Oran and... Matt Hiltman will give you a mention because you think that Michael Matthews is going to hang on. We've certainly seen Orica Greenes doing a lot of work there. If Michael Matthews hangs on today, then we really do have to give him all the praise in the world. Pirazzi then really is setting the pace. Arredondo on his wheel, and the break looks like it's starting to break up a little here, Sean. Yes, well, uh, not surprising when Pirazzi takes the front here, and you can see the way he's just giving a little glance over his shoulder, how many men is left in my wheel here, and, uh, you know, at this point, there'll be a lot of guys saying the breakaway, I you know, would not like to mention the languages there uh, uh, about uh, Pirazzi, because at this point, you know, if you ride a bit steadier and keep the guys together, well then, you know, they can be very valuable a bit further on, because there is a long ways to the finish all the time, but as we know, Pirazzi, that's the way he climbs he just gives you know a sudden acceleration for a couple of hundred meters then knocks it down again and off again and that's so difficult if you're not a good climber it's very hard to stay there in the group already we lost one man 
Just looking around to see exactly who it is. There is Pidazzi on the left in the bright green, the Italian rider riding the Cipollini bike for Bardiani. Just behind him, putting his earpiece in, is the small, diminutive Colombian Julian Arredondo from Trek Factory Racing. Just behind, right at the back of the peloton here, CJ Sutton trying to hang on. Now then, Bandiera gone from the break. That's the man we've lost. And Droni Giocattoli out of the game as far as the break is concerned at the minute. The first serious climbing has begun at the Giro d'Italia. Oh, and boy, is it exciting. Gruppetto will be being cold very, very quickly, I think. CJ Sutton, the leader at the moment of all that. No surprise, really, given the fact that these characteristics are like that. Michael Hepburn is set to join him, as is Svein Tuft. Agnoli, Gasparotto, Scarponi all at the front. Fabio Aru and Scarponi said they've studied the stage today. They want to attack. Aru in particular, the Sardinian, saying he wants to take time back today. We shall see. Co-leaders in the Astana team this year. Will we see Dr. Pozzo Vivo? For Pozzo Vivo as Agnoli comes up to the front. Domestic superior. Below four minutes now. Pirazzi on the left hand side, stage eight of the Giro d'Italia. Bandiera goes from the break. We have nine men out there. First exchanges have taken place, and for Bandiera, it's the beginning of a long and very lonely journey back to the peloton. Well, he's got some more kilometers accumulated for the Fuga Pinarello long breakaway prize. This is what's left of the break at the minute. Nine riders there, Pirazzi still leading things up. Fantastically positioned just behind him. Pierre Kemener in the dark green. This is Pirazzi in the light green. He's the Italian, Kemener is the Frenchman. And of course, Juliana Redondo just behind him. Less than 50 k's to go, the climbing started. Michael Matthews has allowed some sliding room, ridden under the start of this climb right at the front, but he is already starting to slide big style. This is what's left of the breakaway. Pirazzi has broken it up as we expected. Juliana Redondo behind, Pierre Kemener in third place. 3.52 is their advantage. They're climbing up the mountain used by Marco Pantani. Here's Greg Lamont talking about it. The last man to do the double. That Giro Tour double, pink jersey, yellow jersey, a legend in a cy Italian cycling. Of course, splits opinion around the world, but this man is loved still in Italy, 10 years on from his tragic death. Greg Lamont, I met talking Marco, about Marco Pantani. Uh, Pantani at the Tour de France, uh, they had their 100th anniversary announcement in 2002, and uh, his manager came up to me and um, said Marco would like to meet me because I was. He was, I was his childhood uh, hero, and it was really good to meet him because, you know, sometimes, pirate, they, they, you know, it's you have this perception of this, you know, aggressive person, but he was a very aggressive rider, very talented on the bike, but really a nice person, um, very quiet, um, modest. <laughs> Duel with Lance Armstrong on Mont Ventoux in 2000. Antani in pink, Armstrong in yellow. Of course, we all know about the history years, afterwards. Years, you, you have people that are very, uh, they have very strong personalities, and he was one of those, uh, one of those great riders that I, I thought was a added, real added value to the sport. I watched him as a pure talent, pure, one of the best climbers, and uh, with or without, without doping, it would have, he was a super talent. <laughs> Super talent again, his attractors around the world, but a hugely important figure, one that keeps Italian cycling culture going to this very day. Pink jersey's been dropped in the peloton. Michael Matthews goes, the climb really begins. Movistar come to the front, Europe car working for Pierre Rolland as well. BMC with Cadell Evans is happening very, very early on. This is just the first of three big climbs today, Sean. We've had three breakaway men strike out in front. They are Pirazzi, Kemener, and of course the man who is the strongest climber in the break, Juliana Redondo. But behind, it's really hotting up early. 
It sure is. We can see a lot of riders getting into difficulty immediately on the first slopes of the climb. Um, Michael Matthews, surprising that he's losing contact you know, so early, that he uh, he was looking so good in the uh, the previous climbs the last two days and you know winning uh, at the top of. Uh, uh, at the top of a mountain, although you know a much smaller mountain gradient, but at this point it's, uh, it surprised me that he's starting to lose already. Uh, we can see all the sprinters, Bohani also just you know waving goodbye there, all getting ready to form the uh, grubetto or the bus as they call it in uh, in English terms, and uh, we'll have to see you know which team is going to take control of the situation now. It looks like that uh, Quintana's team, Movistar, the ones who are on the front of the bunch with a number of riders, will they really up the pace? Um, it's not uh, it's not really a, you know a, a fierce uh, pace at the moment but will there be a team who will take it up that is the one and if that does happen well then this bunch will totally explode into many many pieces Quintana and Movistar perhaps they were bluffing because they really are riding now Quintana said he was just losing a little bit of force in that left leg wasn't feeling as strong as he'd want to be waiting for the third week and the really hard week but you get the feeling that if BMC are looking strong, Quintana has to do something today. Needs to take some time back. Bad conditions on the road on the way up. A few cobbles as well. In fact, there's a, a little note in the communique, in fact, saying that the road condition wasn't great towards the top of both climbs here. There is Michael Matthews. Well, he's doing his best to hang on at the back of this bunch. Race radio were actually telling us he'd been dropped. But there he is, just hanging into the back. It gets a lot harder, though. We go over a small little peak here. Remember that the climb doesn't top out, doesn't reach its summit until 35.6 kilometers to go. A good uh, over 10 k's to go yet. And the last five kilometers of this are very, very steep. Average above 10%, and of course, maximum out at 14%. If you're not a climber, even if you are a climb and not on a good day, it's hard stuff that at race pace. Yes, and uh, we did see there was a little bit of a ramp there. It's uh, sort of easing off a bit. The percentage is not anything now, but uh, there's still a long ways to the top. And sometimes uh, when you get onto a climb, you have a little bit of difficulty adjusting, uh, you know, to the uh, the rhythm of climbing. You have to go onto a lower gear, of course, and. Uh, of course, you know, Michael Matthews, he wouldn't be a climber. He's a real strong uh, rider on the shorter climbs. Uh, and they are the guys who maybe have difficulty just adapting into that rhythm. But he seemed to have recovered there. He was sliding big time a, 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 a kilometre or two kilometres ago. It looked like he was going to go out the rear door rapidly. But he's recovered well and hanging in there in the last 15 minutes of this group. Will he be able to, you know, hold in there? And it will all depend as well up front. We can see Moby Star with, you know, quite a number of riders here setting the pace but will they really up the pace to an extent that they will uh, blow the peloton apart free riders still up there a lot of people riding in of course we said that Marco Pantani was a rider that polarized opinion yes certainly understand the concerns about the doping but of course unless you have been to Italy unless you've been to the Giro d'Italia you just do not know the effect that this man has on the race it is unique he really does drive Italian cycling culture alone so whether you like him or not again that's not a particular opinion of ours the producers of course reflecting the opinion of italian cycling fans running the feature just to show how much he is remembered by talking about it but not necessarily condoning his actions just illustrating the extent of his impact on italian cycling culture this is what's left of the break that's the distance, Sean. They've done well to work hard and just work their way back very slowly. Watson Hagen still there, as is Finetto. Remember, Finetto just about still is the virtual Maglia Rosa. This, in the meantime, is Pierig Kemeno. Stefano Pirazzi just behind. Climbing well, climbing strongly. Earpiece is pulled out of the ear by Juliana Redondo. He'll be motivated to do something in this Giro d'Italia. Came here wanting to ride for GC. Now he's going to have to look for stages, perhaps even the Mantis classification, because we've got the serious climb Giro to come. And of course, with all of that time that he has trailing, he could really get out and take some serious points with his ability. 
Yes, he can take uh, points, and uh, when he gets into breakaway, of course, uh, he is uh, in a real good position. We're still in the peloton. Uh, if he uh, if he stays up front of the peloton, and if there's a break, maybe not allowed to get away on these mountain stages because Parazzi he needs to get into the break uh, to really mark up big points. Um, where uh, Aradondo, I think he could mark points, you know, uh, even from the peloton with uh, all the big favourites. Um, but um, it's going to be a difficult one, Perazzi, to control him. He's going to get into many breaks in this race. The way he's showing at the moment, uh, um, he looks like that he is getting into form, if not in his best form. And he's the one who's causing the problem here. And we can see he split the break. And he just, you know, gives these sudden decelerations for a couple of hundred metres, but they're not really going away from the uh, other riders. We can see uh, Lamprey, Bono and Nimitz swapping wheels. It's Przemyslav Nimitz, who's one of the stronger climbers in the Lamprey team. Nimitz was talked about as the team leader coming into this race. He's 341 behind now. And, of course, the puncture there isn't great timing for him. It means he's going to have to work very hard from here on in. Yes, well... Oh, and here we go. Sorry to interrupt, Sean, but the pink jersey is being dropped this time. Michael Matthews pedalling squares uphill. It's going to be a goodbye to the pink for him. Looks as though he's accepted it well. Gives us a bit of a smile, just mixed up with that grimace. He's done well to hang on for so long. Yes, and um, he is uh, he's suffering today. I don't think he's on his best day because normally he, you know, he would be that little bit better. When you look at what he's been doing in this race, I think he's on an off day and... Uh, the way he's going at the moment, he's he's really struggling here, trying to keep it going. It looks like that the gearing is too high and that uh, he has problems just uh, keeping it going here. Uh, but when you hang on like that, you cling on for a long time. You really go into the red. When you blow, you blow big time. He has blown. Michael Matthews has had a wonderful start to his first year in Italia. Great to see the Italian fans on the side of the road recognising what a great effort he's put in and recognising his suffering here as well. This is horrible for the sprinters trying to get in, and you expect, Sean, that it's going to be quite a big gruppetto today, helping each other get inside the time limit. Yes, I think there will be a very, very big gruppetto when they form. There's probably a number of groups on the mountain, but uh, they just slowly they come together and then they make uh, that big boss. And for the time limits uh, today, it's not going to be a problem because we're at the end of the stage, so you know there's a huge, uh, uh, a huge time limit there for the guys. Um, the, the difficulty always the time limit when you have a difficult mountain to start and the race goes on all day. Then they have to ride, you know, for so many kilometres to be sure to be inside the time limit. So for the uh, the group Eto is not going to be that problem today. Real big pressure being put on on the front of the peloton. Little ring already for Nido Quintana there. We've seen Andre Amador doing most of the work so far. The Costa Rican rider who is in love with the Giro d'Italia said if he could choose one race to start each year, it would be here in Italy. It's where he won his first Grand Tour stage a couple of years ago. And it is where he really does enjoy the racing. He's moved off to the back of this group at the minute. Well, we start really working hard. They've got such strong climbers. Eros Capecchi is up there as well. Castro Vieja, Rada, and Adriano Madori. BMC Racing. As Luca Paolini comes to the front for Catuscio, what's left of Catuscio at the back? Quintana on the radio, right in the centre of that shot. Well, we start putting a really good pace on here. It's clear the two strongest teams at the minute, Sean. We've seen BMC and Movistar, not too much of Astana, who we also expected to be a strong team, but they also went down on mass the other day, Astana. A lot of riders hurting and injured. We're going to get a scene as to exactly how much people have recovered from that. This is Carpeña, by the way, part of the Sasso Simone mountain range. Simoncello National Park. A lot of people visit here during the summer. On the way to Cipo di Carpegna. A good 600 metres higher up than the town of Carpegna. It's here where the Giro caravan, the publicity caravan, stops for the day. And then makes its way to the finish line a little further down the road. Without getting stuck on the Mauer Road at the top. There's Arredondo on the right. Shouts from fans on the side of the road. Carpegna is dressed up in pink, as you'd expect it to be for the Giro d'Italia.
Three minutes and 50. Those three out the front are doing quite well to hold on to things at the minute, but, Sean, they haven't reached the hardest gradients yet. No, uh, it's stabilising. Uh, stabilising, sorry. <laughs> um, we did see that what was coming down a lot before we got on to the uh, climb, but now it's uh, you know just holding there at that uh, 3.50 and uh, 41 kilometres to go. Uh, when we get to the summit, that will be the uh, interesting point, and it's really when the peloton get there, we'll have to see the advantage uh, because there was still 35 kilometres to go uh, at the top of this first category climb. But you have your 18 kilometres roughly of a descent, and then we start the final 20 kilometres where it just uh, kicks uphill most of the time, although there is a little bit of a, a descent after that second category climb. Um, it's looking uh, possible for the breakaway at the moment. I think these three can work well together and continue on, you know, uh, uh, working. But the pace in the peloton here is very, very fast. We can see Moby Star are really pushing on here. Um, BMC also, you know, fighting to keep control here on the front of the bunch. And uh, uh, what's the reason for it? Uh, because. Um, uh, you know, the general classification, I don't think they're concerned about that. I think it's the uh, climb at the top, the narrowness of the road, and then to get onto this descent, I think that is the worry here in the main peloton. Well, this is where the war begins. 14% out of the uh, village of Carpeña. This is the climb then. Vital statistics, six kilometres long. It's almost 600 metres in height. Average slope says 9.9% there. Maximum of 10%. Pirazzi is the rider on the left, the rider from Frosinone, just outside of Rome. Rides for the Italian team Bardiani, riding in his lime green. On the right-hand side, we have Arredondo, South American, Colombian rider, riding for the American team Trek Factory Racing. And in the dark green there, we saw Pierre Kemener. This is Michael Matthews, and he's going to enjoy his last uh, hour or so in pink, I think. Three minutes and 33. We've just seen Parazzi there on that section, as you said. The gradient is very steep. Maybe not the steepest section, but he's still able to have lunch. <laughs> he was out there, king of the mountain last year. Francis Desjou rider just almost going the wrong side of the roundabout there. There's Kim in there on the left-hand side, doing well to hang on as well. Arredondo looks round, just checking out the health and st status and fitness of everybody is with. Uh, Redondo, without that, is the most talented climber for the big gradients here. He's a smaller guy as well. We seen him in a very, very good, strong stage in California a year ago. This is his first Grand Tour, though. It's funny that Trek Factory Racing behind Sean were doing a great job for Kizilowski. Yes. Kando Zoidl was the Austrian champion who was doing, really putting the pace on. Movistar have taken over again. This time it's Capecchi who's up there. Igor Anton as well, look out for him in the mountains, right at the back, just in front of Nairo Quintana. Strong man is going to be uh, Gorka Izaguirre as well for the mountains. They've got a deluxe lineup, really, more we start. Yes, they have a, a very strong lineup, and uh, when you see Igor Anton, if he is on forum, and uh, he's the one I think uh, is just, you know, uh, sitting back at the moment, uh, some of the uh, maybe not best, uh, not as good climbers. Uh, making the pace for Moby Star and uh, they are putting a lot of riders on the difficulty here and we can see the peloton is starting to stretch out already and uh, it's going to be interesting to see you know when they get to the steep part what the reaction what the uh, the movement will be in the peloton as it stands with the situation on the road at the minute Cadell Evans is the virtual Magliarota the virtual leader of the race a long long way to go for things to change today though three minutes and 20 you can tell in fact but these guys are on the flatter section through Carpeña, and those out in front are on those 13, 14% gradients. There's a very, very fast pace being set on the front here. There's Zoidl, who goes to the front again in that white and red jersey. 22 seconds for this chasing group. And, of course, including Barson Haag and the remnants of the breakaway. Three minutes and 13 now back to the peloton. Valerio Agnoli still feeling the crash, maybe, from the other day, is surprisingly close to the back here of this uh, chasing peloton. 75 for Colombia is Leo Duque, road captain. Arashiro is there as well as our first rider from Movistar who's done a really good job today. Eros Capecchi stops to peel off the back. It's the caravan making its way up. The view from the top of the Chipuri Carpeña stands at uh, 1,358 metres. 
There are some people who are going to really suffer today for the first time on this Giro d'Italia. Maximum gradient of 14%. Same position as we were, Pirazzi taking it on from the front. The road's starting to narrow, the road's getting older. Twists and the turns, there's many bends up here. Lots of changes of rhythm, lots of changes of gradient. Not an easy climb to take on. Certainly for riders such as Basso and Evans behind, who certainly prefer very, very steady gradients. Well, here we go, the pace is on again. Long live the Giro says that, long live Pantani says the banner underneath. And this is what's happening behind Cataneo, alongside the Colombian rider Quintero. Boisson Hagen, they're the three chasing. 20 seconds behind Vorganov in the red and white. The Russian trying to keep on behind. You're getting a real appreciation from this heli shot of all the twists, turns and bends. Under three minutes now. Just shows the great pace being put on behind. But, Sean, again, you get the feeling that when they get on the narrow road, seeing the gradients go up, we've seen that peloton fracturing, and it's going to shed a lot more riders out the back as soon as that gradient changes again. Yes, if they continue on uh, pushing as they have been back in the peloton, it's going to, uh, you know, really cause problems for a lot of riders. Will we see some of the general classification men having difficulty following the pace being set by Moby Star? And we can see up front, Pirazzi is at his usual, just given that sudden acceleration, we could see the others making a bit of a sprint to stay with him. Oh, the real climbs beginning behind, through the curtains that lead them on to a very, very famous, famous piece of road. You can see the images of the fast battle in the 70s between Merckx and Fuente. You can see the images of the man we talked about a lot, who's been pink on the Giro d'Italia before. These are what's left at the moment. Movistar with just two men in front of Nairo Quintana. This is Pirazzi alongside Arredondo. Pierre Kemener is the rider who's just struggling to hold the wheel at the minute, Sean, the Frenchman at the back in green. Yes, he is doing uh, real well because um, with Pirazzi, it's so difficult, you know, to climb with him. Um, the way he uh, just, you know, puts on uh, a big effort and uh, then just slows it down a bit again, same again. Uh, unless you're a real good climber, and of course, Aradundo, he's the one who can do that. You know, a small, lightweight Colombian, a specialist uh, climber, but Criminal is just uh, hanging in there well. But um, it's uh, it's it's the same situation from Pirazzi. You know, he. He had the three riders with him there. They wanted to continue on, just walking away at it, but uh, he just does his norm where he just uh, up the pace all the time and then uh, really makes it difficult for everybody. And still with quite a way to get to this summit. And we're so long in this climb. The lead into the climb has been very, very difficult and we can see the consequences. You know, uh, uh, riders just having difficulty. The fast men we could see there, I think, was... Um, uh, Villers uh, really having difficulty just keeping it going on a, on a steeper section back, further back, a long ways back the road. We saw Oscar Gatto as well, the classic hunter from Cannondale. Kemener on the left hand side's never won a bike race, but's been a very solid pro with the same team since 2008. He's 30 years of age now. 181 said to be just tall, weighs in at around 67 kilos, doing his best to stay with two riders who are used to staying out there in the climbs. Arredondo on the right hand side, Pirazzi on the left. Could be two men that we're going to see in breakaways in this Giro d'Italia fighting it out for the mountains jersey. Mark Cellinghi currently wearing that at the moment. Carlos Quintero and Edouard Boisson Hagen, still the chasing group, they're shedding men all the time. Boisson Hagen's climbing quite well here. Yes, he is climbing well. Consistent is with Quintero because, you know, a real good climber as well. And uh, Boisson Hagen is just working away at it. And of course, Bo Boisson Hagen, you know, he's not able to t uh, take these sudden accelerations. So what he's doing is just climbing away at his pace and that he's just, you know, a power rider. And that's what they've got to do. And uh, he's not losing a huge amount of ground. We did see they're a little bit further down. You know, they weren't far off the three leaders out here. So it'll be interesting to see at the top where they can be and will they get back on the descent. It will soon be down to the general classification men themselves. You can already see Basel isolated. Evans with only one teammate around him. You expect that to either be Morabito or Sanchez at the moment. Two minutes and 26 further back. We saw one Norway star rider there for... Uh, Naido Quintana, we can see Rafa Maika with an ally, expect that to be Nico Roach. 
climber just in front of Domenico Pozzo Viva. I would guess that to be Alexi Vujamo. Certainly looks to be him and his climbing style, that mouth open every couple of seconds, just keeps his rhythm going. Pozzo Viva really well positioned here. Yes, um, and uh, we did see Alexi Vujamo um, in Paris Nice. He was very impressive there uh, with, uh, the, uh, with the Colombian weather. Um, from AG2R here, he's starting to set the pace here. Pozzo Vivo looking comfortable, and uh, as you say, um, not a lot of uh, riders here with teammates, so it's going to be an interesting one. Um, will we will we see some attacks before the top of this climb? Uh, if uh, all the big favourites start to lose their uh, teammates, well, then we could see somebody having a go here. Samuel Sanchez there with uh, Cadell Evans. Rogers up there as well. Guillermo climbing fantastically well, as you said. So I'm really impressed by him in Paris Nice. 38.9 kilometers to go. This climb tops out at 35.6 to go. So a good three and a bit kilometers to the top yet. And this gets steeper and steeper and steeper. Such a hard climb, very short. But for this Giro d'Italia, it's a big, big introduction to things. Nicholas Roach on the wheel of Rafael Maika. Rada Heijdal is still in this group as well, as is Robert Kizilovsky, Rigoberto Uran is there. This is where we are on the climb, being through that section where we have the 14% gradient. Levels out, I should say levels out slightly, just above 10%. Back with the lead of the race, two minutes and three, it's coming down all the time. Just shows what a brutal rhythm's going on behind, really, really great work. First from Movistar, now from Ashi Desert. General classification boys really are interested in this. Two more climbs still to go. It's going to be hard on the descent to see too much regroupment here. This is going to be a fight between the big boys. And we can see here the, the, uh, the leading uh, three riders, how narrow the road is. And we talked about that. It just gets very narrow at the top. And um, the good thing is it's well stretched out here. The peloton, there's a lot of riders, you know, dropped already, so it's not a huge group, and uh, they're pretty much in one line with Villemus uh, setting the pace here uh, for Pozo Vivo. And uh, this climb is it's just going on and on. It seems to... It feels like we're on a climb for so long, but the lead into the climb was so difficult here, it's caused a lot of problems for everybody. Franco Pellizzotti on the right-hand side in the white, blue and red of Androni Giocattoli. Wilco Kelderman is there for Belkin, Dutch rider in the light green, black and white. This wooded climb up to uh, Cipo di Carpegna, hiding our view of the riders at the minute. That's better back with the open mouth breathing technique of Alexi Vujamo. Just behind him, Pozzo Vivo. Talked about that economics degree just a few days ago. Has he got his percentages right here? It's a funny old technique, that Vuja, wasn't it? <laughs> Almost looks like a fish. Fish out of water. <laughs> <laughs> it's working for him anyway, and as you say, it worked for him in Paris Nice and Carlos Betancourt then. Back to the front of the race. Still it's Pidazzi, keeps looking round. They wait for each other to attack, and as this gap goes down, Sean, surely somebody's going to jump out soon. In the meantime, Pierre Kemenel wants the camera to clear off. As you deserve behind. Just being monitored by Europe Car and Pierre Roland. Roland just waited to see what happens with the breakaway, of course, Sean, because he has a teammate there. Yes, well, he has. Uh, he's the man out front, and as we can see, you know, the advantage is coming down. And uh, it's a surprise to see AG2R, the team, taking it up here. I was expecting, you know, Mobistar to continue on for much longer. And uh, the bigger teams, let's say Cannondale, maybe they might have somebody capable of setting the pace. Here, but um, Willem was is uh, you know, setting a quite strong pace. But up front, there's a bit of marking going on, and uh, Arredondo is just following here, not really taking it. And I think Perazzi is concerned here again. He puts Pirazzi him on this test. Dig, pardon me, Perazzi onto the pedal straight away. It's a real test this time for Pierre Kemeno to hang on. As you said, Sean, it's that little dig, then he eases up at the minute, not managing to drop them. The Frenchman's doing fantastically to hold on. Pierre Kemener right at the back in the dark green. 
Arredondo looking round. Pirazzi, even though he fell the other day, looked in a real bad way. We wondered if he would start the next day. He looks in great shape here. Yes, he's back to his usual, and uh, you know he's doing his uh, real well. And uh, Arredondo is, uh, you know, marking him, and it's going to be the battle for the GP and the maximum points here, of course. Uh, a fourth category climb. So at the top of this one, there is uh, 32 points. So. The mountain jersey is up for grabs here between the two of them and we're going to see uh, a really uh, big contest uh, between the both of them. Well, we're going to have a new leader of the Maddies classification, whatever happens. Remember, 14 points is what Montchelingi, or sorry, Michael Matthews has at the minute. Montchelingi behind in 12 points, he's looking at that. Now, this is interesting. Barson Hagen and Quintero have managed to close the gap to just 12 seconds, Sean. Yes, and uh, we can see why... Bosenhagen just working on it, keeping you know, a good, strong pace. Uh, we're up front, they're just putting in these attacks. The Pirazzi, you know, attack, and then it's slowing down again. So they're not... Uh, the three out front are not pulling away, and uh, we will see Bosenhagen coming back after the top of this one. Astana, we're hearing on race radio, just losing a few metres. Both Aru and Scarponi, we can't see them anywhere near towards that chasing group. So this could be one team, as we said earlier, you can lose the Giro d'Italia today. You can't win it. It's a cliche, we know, but you can lose the Giro. Here goes Arredondo. Time for another attack. Can Pirazzi follow this time? Arredondo, the Colombian, puts in his own little dig. Lays it off briefly. This time, Kermener is dropped. And we're left with two if Pirazzi can follow. Does Arredondo want somebody to follow with him here, Sean? Because there's still a heck of a long way up. Well, I think he's a bit... Uh peed off of Pirazzi <laughs> just attacking all the time and uh, he says well if, if you can do that well I can do the same and he puts in this attack and Pirazzi in a little bit of difficulty closing down he will close down there and uh, we can see uh, Criminal is the one who was in difficulty but I don't think there will be a big gap between any of those guys at the top and we will see a regroup and also with uh, Bosenhagen I think we will see him coming back as we can see here the Astana guy starting to slip back in the peloton it's Fabio Aru that means Scarponi was the rider talked about on race Radio. Now, this is a big, big attack from Julian Arredondo. Out there on front, out there on his own, with all his names in full glory there. Julian David Arredondo Moreno, there you go. On our caption, the Colombian rider. We said all day that he's the most talented climber in the bunch. The only natural climber, really. Pirazzi, yes, is a special rider in that he attacks and attacks and has got a huge, huge heart. But Arredondo was always the quality one in the bunch, wasn't he? Yes, uh, well, when you see the guy, like, you know, just a tiny, lightweight guy um, and a brilliant uh, climber, that's, you know, where he is at his strongest in this sort of terrain. Um, but Pirazzi, you know, he is uh, a, a great battler and he just keeps on fighting and, uh, you know, just uh, always puts up a great spectacle. And, you know, he's been the one who has been uh, really uh, making it a bit exciting here. Um, it doesn't look like Pirazzi is going to be able to close down, so it looks like Arredondo is the one who is going to take maximum points here for the mountain classification. Well, if you haven't been watching the North American races and the pro continental teams recently, you might not know too much about Julian Arredondo. He's from Ciudad Bolivar in Colombia. He's riding for Trek this year, riding with Nippo last year, and of course with Elite Two before that. He's done uh, pretty well this season. Two wins in the Tour de San Luis. Took stage six, took stage two, and he came fourth overall in the race that was won by Nido Quintana. He's won previously in Japan as well. He's won in Langkawi. In fact, he won the overall in Langkawi a season ago as well. Special, very talented rider. Rider who uh, this year will turn 26. He's at the minute riding for Trek. A very, very good progression. He's progressing pretty well up this mountain. 1 minute 26, though, is his advantage on the bunch. And, of course, with the pace that's being put on here by Ajit is there, despite Arredondo's strong attack and real strength to keep going where he is at the minute, it's still not looking great for him for the stage win, is it? No, I don't think it's going to happen for him because uh, we can see here the way uh, Willem was from AG2R is pushing on the pace. Uh, 
Before that, we had Movistar who really uh, went into the climb very hard, and the advantage we can see, you know, it's coming down 1.15 at the moment. Um, it's not going to be sufficient at all for Adunda to hold on, but he is thinking about uh, the mountain classification, so he's uh, securing that maximum points on this first, first category climb of the Giro. Approaching the top of the climb, just over a kilometre to go for Arredondo. Managed to strike out on his own, but today looks like being a day for those behind chasing as far as a stage win is concerned. It's going to be a GC day, it's going to be a big day. Could be the day that Michele Scarponi leaves his Giro chances, because we're looking to the back of this group, and you can't see him. It's Fabio Aru, the Sardinian climber who's in this group for Astana. Asher Desair setting the pace. Quintana and Uran, both Colombians, riding in big teams, both isolated in this top group. Edouard Vorganov of the break is swallowed up by Azure Desert. They have three men in here now. Porto Vivo waiting, Porto Vivo being sheltered. Some good riding being done by their riders. Just one Astana in the group, that is Fabio Aru. Cadell Evans still being looked after by Samuel Sanchez. But this is the leader on the road at the minute. Look at the crowd up here. Loads of Colombian fans as well. The old Mercatone Uno jerseys of Marco Pantani and remember Stefano Garzelli back in the day as well are being ridden. But look at the grey as well. It's steep at the minute. Plus 10%. 36.1 k's to go inside the last kilometre before those uh, King of the Mandans points are dished out. Looks behind, Sean. But what was in front has really collapsed. Pirazzi and Kemen are just making their own way. They have lost a heck of a lot of terrain already to Arrimondo. Yes. What a stinging attack. Yes, what an attack. And Kemen uh, is the one who was really uh, riding well here. He's uh, you know, staying with Pirazzi. I think uh, that uh, the firepower has gone out of Pirazzi, as we can see here. It's Kemen who was just going to take up the pace setting. And... Uh, it's going to be for Adondo uh, mountain classification at the end of this one uh, if he can hold on out here and uh, it's not over yet because he could uh... Pirazzi goes part of me well he was bluffing Pirazzi he was having us all on pulls out goes for it and he wants that second place on those points remember heck of a lot of points to be given out here it is a first category climb Pirazzi looking like he was beaten looking like he was gone he even had us fooled here Strikes out. He's not going to catch this man, I don't think. The car's gone in that gap. It's so big now. And Juliana Redondo will go on to take the maximum 32 points. I think you said it is, Sean, for the first man to go over on this mountain's classification. Ivan Basso still in there, as is Robert Kitalowski. Heijdal there as well. Rigoberto Uran, Nairo Quintana. We can see Samuel Sanchez, who is uh, alongside Cadell Evans. Steve Morabito is there as is Wilco Kelderman. Good close look at this group, Basso in the lime green. This is Pirazzi. Strikes on, looking for that second place. Oh, look at these crowds. Right outside the Pantani monument at the top of this climb. Julian Arredondo on extremely narrow roads. It's a real good job they've put barriers up here. Otherwise, we'd have public all the way in the road. And as soon as I say that, we get to a section where the public are really going to cause and pose some problems for the riders when they come up en masse. Arredondo first on the road. Pirazzi second. The Colombian, followed by the Italian, followed by a heck of a big group that is whittling down by a rider each time the accelerations are put on 75 meters from the top then again really thankful that some barriers up here certainly when the rest of the group comes up it's going to help Arredondo takes the maximum points and moves into the virtual blue jersey blue jersey for the mountains classification we're going to get a time check back to Stefano Pidaz who's recovered somewhat on this climb just did a bit of wheel sucking on the back of uh, Pierre Kemener for a while had us all fooled He's going to come into the final 75 metres 
It's going to be a good 30 seconds behind Arredondo, so we're seeing the strength of his attack. But, of course, the important gap, Sean, is the one that's going to come now when the peloton, or what's left of it, we should call them the uh, favourites now, come over the top of this climb. Yes, I think uh, it's uh, not going to be a, a great advantage. The advantage is nothing uh, big enough to, for him to hold on out here, although Arredondo is a, you know, a, re a real good climber. He has to make the descent here, but I think uh, yeah, the, that, the, the final run-up, unless he is, you know, very, very strong, unbelievably strong to hold off the peloton the way it's looking at the moment. It doesn't look like it's going to be possible for him. What is to come? As you desire. With Alexis Vuillermo and Domenico Pozzovivo. Just to see if any of these guys who are on the outskirts, let's say, of the GC battle may go out and attack for the rest of these King of the Mountains points. There's the Colombian rider we had in the break, Carlos Quintero, comes over fourth, 1 minute 30. Still, still a superb ride from Alexi Vuillermo. Edward Boston Hagen and then Cataneo coming across. 1 minute 46 behind. Right, looks as though Redondo's attack has just put a bit more time in the to the peloton. We were talking a minute and a half, weren't we, before that happened? Yes, uh, it is. Uh, after um, pulling out a bit in Arredondo, we could see that the last kilometre he has uh, you know, upped the pace quite a lot. And uh, the uh, the rest of the breakaway, or some of the breakaways, as you said, Bose and Hagen, they're just, uh, luckily, they're going to make it across over the summit here. And coming across over the summit, number seven there, Mikel Landa for Astana. Still looking to which riders have been dropped and which are going to have to do some work on this descent to get some time back on. It is a real good job that there isn't a big group coming over the top here because these are extremely narrow roads. You can see they're not in the best condition. Lots of little potholes. Nicholas Roach coming across. Had a look behind. Remaining Asher Dezer riders who've done a great job up. Anybody who's lost a little bit of time here is going to be under real scrutiny. We look to see if there are any big names. Inigo. A 1.57 is the gap back to the peloton. We're off for a quick break before the final bit of climb. All the talk of the Dolomites, all the talk of the Alps, but the Apennines are having their say on the Giro d'Italia as well. 31.1 kilometers remain. Juliana Redondo is out there in front. He's virtually the man who remains from the break. The peloton chasing on behind. But a few men who are in the break with him. A few seconds in, in no man's land, really. The peloton trying to pull on. But Sean Kelly, who's alongside me, Juliana Redondo put in a wonderful stinging attack. Gained about 30 seconds on the peloton as he went over. Extended his lead, and he's got another 10 to 12 seconds since he's been descending. He's descending well. Yes, he is uh, working quite well at it, and uh, over two minutes in advantage with 30 kilometres to go. And the descent here is quite a long one. They still have to go down almost to 20 kilometres from the finish. We continue on to go downhill, and then from there on, it's uh, an uphill battle all the way. Although after the second category climb, which is to come, there's a little bit of a downhill. On your own, it's uh, going to be a, you know, a long, difficult road for him, and uh, we can see the peloton are pushing on. It's uh, it's possible, but with two minutes, I'm concerned that uh, it's going to be uh, too much and too far for him to hold on. Carl comes alongside. He's had a few uh, gear problems. He looks just sorted those out. A little bit of a sticky bottle as well there for Julian Arredondo. Colombian rider with two wins to his name this year. Looking for his first European win. First win on world tour level as well. Overall climber standings look like this then after the first passage. Arredondo and Pirazzi catapulting themselves into first and second position. 30 kilometers to go now for Arredondo. Peloton behind at 1 minute and 43. Of what you've seen behind, Sean, as you just there looking strong, Pozzo Vivo could be one of the favourites for the day, you feel? Well, it looks like... Uh... They're uh, preparing the terrain for him. We could see that AG2R, they put a number of men on the front there and uh, kept the pace real high on this uh, climb. And uh, 
As we look here, you know, they're still working away. Um, it looks like that, uh, yes, he is really uh, going for it because uh, for the general classification, there's no need uh, for them to start riding at this point, so it looks like it's all for stage victory here. Well, if Arredondo can survive to the top of the next climb, again, which is still a difficult ask because the next climb, second category climb, tops out with 9.7 kilometres to go, then if he gets the points there, whatever happens, he will be in the mountains jersey, and that will be some sort of success for him today. Remember, another medium mountain stage coming up tomorrow. It's the first big weekend of the Giro d'Italia. Colombian rider with inside 30 k's to go here. Now we're seeing Cataneo and... Uh, Pierre Kemener, in fact, are we? This looks like Pierre Alon, pardon me. Yes. Pierre Alon, the left-hand side. Confirmation that it is him. Is that an attack of the peloton, or has he been dropped? It looks like an attack of the peloton. Um, we just have to wait for confirmation on that, but surprising that uh, the way the uh, peloton is going at this moment, uh, that he is going in the attack because uh, AG2R are really pushing on. Well, it's that little false flat where it comes uphill. We saw Arredondo lose a few seconds when that happened. It is Pierre Alain who's attacked, looks behind him, goes under the 30k to go banner. And you just saw Steve Morabito a moment ago in the red and black of BMC swinging to the right, having a look at the situation, and perhaps communicating things to his uh, director of sportif. And obviously, we haven't had too many shots of the peloton, so. Again, Director Sportif not able to see on TV the situation of the race and getting a report back from the Swiss rider out in front. Front of the left on front of the race on the left hand side, if you get the words in the right order, for Arredondo. Pierre along the top right hand side of your screen. Peloton on the right, that's Fabio Aru in the Kazakhstani colours of Astana. Very interesting to see how it goes. A lot of riders have been quite isolated a little earlier on than maybe they thought as well. Only two or three in that group behind our teammates left short. Yes, and um, it's not surprising we see the way they went on to this uh, difficult climb. Um, they really pushed on in the earlier part, and we see you know, the way the peloton just uh, exploded totally, and uh, a lot of the riders that we would be expecting to be up there even some of the favourites, as we said, uh, Scaponi, we talked about. We're not sure if he has made it back, how much time he lost. Uh, but uh, yeah, the big favourites, a lot of them just uh, isolated totally here. But uh, we see uh, uh, Pierre Roland going in the attack. Um, when you see there's a team riding on the front, as the AG2 uh, all are doing, uh, what's the point in doing it here? I think he's uh, going to uh, burn a lot of energy for very little gain at the end of the day. 1.43 back to Roland. Waiting for the gap to the peloton. In sections of this road replace. We knew that on the way up, the road condition wasn't fantastic. 41, again, still waiting for that gap to the peloton. How much does Roland have on the peloton? I should say, a bunch of favourites now. 26.7, waiting for those questions to be answered. Now, two Aston R riders. Somebody's got back on. We saw Mikel Lander drop. It could either be Lander or it could be Scarponi, you feel. Fabio Aru was the main man out in the front. So one Aston R rider at least has done a decent job to get back on. Looked as though there were two or three from BMC. There's Morabito at the front, he's leading Evans, and now then, looks as though it's a little bit of an attack. Portsavivo's the man who's going to follow. Nicholas Roach behind him, and Rafael Maika in the white. Vuyamo is the sixth rider on the road, in white and brown of Azure Desert. But Cadell Evans being paced by Steve Morabito. Just in the corner of his shot there, you can see Naido Quintana, and for all the work that Moby Star did, he is one of those riders who's been isolated. Yes, and you would expect uh, Igor Anton was the one who was just uh, following. He did not really uh, push on on the climb. I thought he was going to be the one that could stay with Quintana. Doesn't look like he's there and having been there for quite a while. We can see AG2R, they still have two riders in there. Uh, we can see Pozo Vivo very much uh, uh, to the front of affairs. And uh, it's a, a team of BMC Racing who are just uh, setting the pace at the moment. Steve Morabito doing a great job. Swiss rider who's been alongside Cadell Evans in all the important moments over the last few years. Missed his home tour to Romandie to prepare for this. Back with Pierre Alain, 
trying to chase down the leader on the day, who is Juliana Redondo. He's 1 minute 35 back, along putting his daredevil skills to practice. Really pedalling hard on the descent. Yes, and uh, of course, we have a, a number of riders in between here. Um, Pirazzi, uh, as we see, and uh, the team is criminal. They're, uh, uh, I reckon they're all in between. We haven't seen being pulled back by the main peloton and uh, Bowes and Hagen. So there is quite a lot of riders, uh, I think, on the descent here, uh, chasing down uh, Redondo. And uh, Pierre Roland, of course, is the one. He's a man for the general classification. So uh, they're focusing on him on it quite a lot for the moment. A few of you writing in and saying that uh, you think Pierre Roland will win the stage. That's the gap back to the Maglia Rosa group. That's where Michael Matthews is, so it's safe to assume now that Michael Matthews will not be in the race lead at the end of the day, but I think most people assume that, even Michael Matthews himself at the start of the day. Peloton, riders coming back all the time. Arredondo on a nervous moment here. Just wary of that pothole, taking the turn on the wrong apex. Tries to get the camera motorbike out the way. One thirty-seven. That cap not really budging too much to uh, Pierre Roland. It's a funny measure of how much energy to put into a descent when you know you've got a second and a first category climb to come. Yes, well, it's all about uh, getting the line right, of course, and we can see Arredondo there. Uh, he is uh, descending, but not taking any risk. He's certainly not, you know, uh, overcooking it on the corners. Um, um, and we can see Pierre Roland also, you know, just uh, making his way down here. I don't think anybody wants to take big risks at this point. Still with, you know, 23 kilometres to go. And as you say, two climbs to come. It's all about getting down safely and see, uh, see, see what the situation is. But, uh, you know, the 130 advantage uh, for Arredondo, I think, uh, when we get to this flat section, that's where he's going to have difficulty maintaining his advantage. Going through Penabili. A couple of castle ruins that you can see up there. On our way today to Monte Copiolo. Cipo di Carpegna done, out the way. Descending from that, next climb, a second category climb to Villaggio del Lago. And then the final first category ascent, 8.1 kilometers long, up to Monte Copiolo itself. The race has been blown apart. Juliana Redondo, who was reportedly offered a contract by Team Colombia, but rejected it. Wanted to go to a World Tour team. That was his ambition. Here he is, riding the Giro d'Italia in the World Tour team. And of course, here he is, being chased down by Pierre Alain, the Frenchman riding in the dark green colours of Europe car. It's an exciting race situation, but of course, with all the climbing still to come, Sean, you get the feeling that the guys behind are still going to have a lot to say about this. Well, I would think uh, there's a lot of riders in the peloton there who will just uh, have a big... Uh, a big say in the final here, you know, they have been playing the waiting game just far on the race. We must remember that uh, Aradondo has been out there for a long time, so he has to tire in the end. And in the final 20 kilometres, it's going to be difficult for him. Uh, difficult to see that he can, you know, keep going at the pace he was on the final climb. He has to pay the price. and. It's going to be uh, interesting to see, will, uh, you know, uh, BMC, Cat 11s, will they really push on the other big favourites? There's a possibility, of course, that when we get on to the final climb of the day, they could be, you know, uh, the, uh, looking about, the big favourites could start looking at each other, so the ones out in front here could, you know, hold on the advantage for uh, quite a long time. Will they have enough to hold on to the finish? That is the question. Now, we get a good idea of who's in this group. It's Mikel Landa, who is there for Astana. We wonder whether it was he or Scarponi. Peloton are two minutes and ten behind the leader at the moment, who is Arredondo. Ivan Basso was in there. We saw the jersey of uh, Giacomo Nizzolo in there. I'm sure that that's a mistake. Certainly had a, a funny number underneath all of that. I get the feeling it might have been... Uh, Kisilovsky in his national champion's jersey. You would expect it to be Kisilovsky. That's Mick Rogers right on the back for Tinkoff Saxo. He's alongside Rafael Mika. Good performance from the man who's back on his bike. 
Nairo Quintana in there for Movistar, Pelizzotti, Basso, Landa, Kelderman, number 41 in the green and black. Brother Heijdal's there. Heijdal in conversation with uh, the rider from Omega Farmer Quickstep, who's the team leader, of course, Rigoberto Uran. Pierre on the left-hand side, top left, we can see who is the leader, Arredondo. And we've got our first images of the first chasing group. The likes of Pirazzi, who we haven't seen for a while. Wow, look at that now. 58 seconds behind Roulan at the latest time check. Putting some time into Arredondo. Arredondo being given a real shot on at the side of the road. Team car screaming at him. Arredondo rejoining his teammate. Now, this is an interesting situation, Sean. Pierre Kemener, does he just burn himself out for his teammate now? Yes, I think uh, he's going to make the effort here just to, uh, to get back to the uh, two riders out in front. And um, as we were ca calculating there, there's you know a lot of riders in between uh, the uh, leader on the road, uh, Arredondo and uh, Pierre Olan. Um, as we can see here, they're going to join up forces here, and uh, the advantage uh, for our leader is going to definitely come down now because, you know, with a group of four chasing here at the moment, it's, uh, uh, it's going to be difficult for him to hold on to the advantage we see just some moments ago. Kemener is there. Carlos Quintero, number 77. We haven't seen him for a while. Pirazzi's still in. This group forming together and forming a decent alliance could have something to say here with the man up the road. That man up the road is Edvard Boisenhagen. Another man further up the road is the leader on the road. This is a great chase from uh, Edvard Boisenhagen, really honouring his national day. And again, he's already took the birthday present of those 500 euros for the intermediate sprint. Can he have something to say in terms of the final story of this stage eight on the Giro d'Italia? Edvard Boisenhagen giving Sky something to cheer about. Remember, we've looked back to this group and on the group behind, we haven't seen Dario Cataldo, have we? Nobody from Sky there. No, I haven't seen him, although we haven't uh, really have uh, got a picture of the tail end of the peloton. About 20 riders, maybe 22 riders in the front there. Uh, as we can see here, we, we keep on going back with just the, uh, the final two or three riders we haven't been seeing. Uh, we also see uh, from uh, Neri Sotoli, uh, uh, Finetto, who was up there in the break originally, he's still in here in this group of big favourites. Marco Bandiera as well, who was in the group earlier on. Arredondo, 18.3 k's to go. Slight uphill section, still descending in the main. Next climb begins just round about now. Ever Boston Hagen. Kemener pushing himself on for his leader, Pierre Roland. Roland shouts a couple of instructions up the road. Also hanging on to this group. Stefano Pirazzi behind in the light green and white and in the black and Colombian colours. Of course, Carlos Quintero. Now, riders getting back on all the time. A couple of Lampre riders there. And Carlos Zoidl, the Austrian champion as well. Steve Morabito at the front still. Nick Rogers is there for Tinkoff Saxo 209. Alexi Vujamo still number 19, second position. Domenico Pozzovivo, the Italian, in the white and brown, fourth position on the road. Boston Hagen. 50 seconds behind this man. Just 12 seconds in front of that second chasing group. There are some tired faces being pulled at the minute because... Arredondo now is on the climb to the second category, Villaggio del Lago. He's got a good 600 metres or so to climb. It's a climb that uh, lasts around nine kilometres. Tops out with 9.7 to go. Brief descent then to Villa Grande before we get the final first category up to Monte Copiolo.
great performance by Boston Hagen to still be in the mix here. Bodies gathering together at the front of them. Those who've got back can still do some work for their teammates. Matteo Montaguti close to the front for Asia Desaire as well. Second chasing group on the right. Pierre Kemeno really is giving it his all for his team today. He's been in the break. And we're hearing that Dario Cataldo is back on in that chasing group as well in the peloton. Boston Hagen caught there. And to form an alliance to chase. 107 behind, 210 to the peloton. Asher does that with four riders in here now. Certainly in terms of a team performance, Sean Kelly, this is the best we've seen. It's a big performance by AG2R because at this point you can see the riders that are in that group are big favourites, you know, all big uh, uh, big names and AG2R as a team with uh, four riders, it's amazing and they're the ones who you know, are pushing on here in the peloton for quite a while. We see uh, Villemos and now we see Monteguti taking it up, so uh, this is a chance uh, for Pozo Vivo to have a go for stage victory. When you see your teammates like that and they're working for you, well then it gives you that extra motivation and of course this final climb, it's... Uh, it's a pose of Evo, a perfect one for him to launch something here. But again, there's a lot of other big names, as I say, and will he be allowed that space? He is a little bit further down on general classification, but still at 2.11, he's a danger man. One minute and five to the chasing group. The chasing group is dropping a couple of riders. Gary Kemener doing all that work. Edward Barson Hagen finally having all that work take its toll on him. We've got Pirazzi striking out in front. And now Samuel Sanchez is back in the group. Fabio Aru is still there. Kizilovski as well. Matteo Rabotini at 1 minute 25 back. Feneri Sotoli is in this group too. Interesting to see. How much can you recover on a descent like that before this climb gathers again? Because there's a lot of climbing still to go. Can we expect the guys who've already been dropped to really struggle on the final two climbs here? Difficult to see um, if you... Uh really get in difficulty on the climb and uh, if you look at uh, for example uh, BMC um, Samuel Sanchez well then he's such a good ascender even if you uh, get a very hard time on the climb you can come back and uh, uh, but if you're in the peloton here on what you call the peloton uh, that group of 20 plus riders and you're a good ascender you just follow on the way down you eat and drink of course which is very important here and you can recover a bit and as we can see you know this group is getting bigger all the time that is evidence of that recovery. Now they're saying 104 to the second group and 240 to the next group on the row. We'll have to wait to see if we can get that confirmed. Can't imagine them giving him the wrong times. Of course, they're the recorded times. It's changing all the time as well. We do our best with the transponders on the bikes to try and give you the digital times. There you go. 240 to the peloton. And that's interesting because he's further up the climbs here. Pirazzi on the right, Pierre Alain on the left. Frenchman joins the party. Pierre Alain three minutes and one second down on the overall. One of those who lost a bit more time than uh, he would have wanted to do so far, Sean. But again, if he can steal something back today, then you could say he's back in the shout. Yes, well, at three minutes, if he can steal you know, uh, a minute plus, well, then he's really back in there again. Juliana Redondo. Riding out on his own. He's on the second category climb up to Villaggio del Lago at the moment. As things stand, he leads the Madden's classification. Again, that grab to two minutes and 40 behind, and you're perhaps starting to get the first little bit of an indication of the time gaps, of course, on general classification, because he's 18 minutes behind, 19 minutes, pardon me, behind now. And the real fight is going on behind. They don't care about him anymore. No, well, I think for the general classification, he's not in the reckoning. Uh, but uh, again, we can see the stage victory. I think there's uh, teams thinking about that. And Egypt, uh, Egypt, to all the Mondial, uh, they look like that. You know, they were the ones who are uh, riding for Pozo Vivo with uh, stage victory in mind. Um, the time gaps have changed a bit because we were getting that the uh, group of favourites were much closer to our leader on the road, Arredondo. Uh, that uh, has uh, 
that has changed a bit now and if he's over the two minutes as we were seeing was it two minutes 40 we got at one time there uh, that is you know quite a substantial advantage at 15 kilometers to go and we can see that uh, roll on he is going to be the one that's caused difficulty for Rodondo because he's coming out of the peloton he's a fresher man but again AG2R are the ones uh, who seem to be controlling at the front of the bunch here we did see uh, BMC racing also for a little time there um, pushing on but uh, AG2 are the ones who are in numbers here Montagouti at the front number 18 Dupont behind Hubert Dupont is a second place rider on the road Alexis Vuillermo third three riders working fantastically well together just behind them is Mick Rogers Rafa Mike at the top of your shot there Number 100 is Damiano Cunego and Michele Scarponi is back in the group as well. Astana, or isn't he? Pardon me, this is the group that's chasing on to get back. Scarponi being helped has two domestics alongside him. And at the front is Paolo Tiralongo. Behind him is Andre Zeit. So Scarponi losing some time here today. We knew it was off the back. No time gaps yet to this man. Trying to see the company that he's in. Yonder Godoy is on the right -hand side in the white, the Androni Giocattoli rider. Just behind him, number 168, is Roman Sicar, the French Basque climber, formerly of Euskaltel Euskadi. One minute seven to the chasing group. Now, this being officially called the Scarponi group. Of course, one of the favourites, losing time. And after his injury the other day, he's showing his anger, he's showing that he feels that Cadell Evans is the big favourite to win the Giro d'Italia now. Scarponi, certainly with Aru further up the road, could now be turning into a man who's going to have to work for the young Sardinian. Roland just sitting on the wheel, doing some real wheel sucking here. Boston Hagen with Kemen Er. Oh dear, they look spent. Motorbikes coming past all the time, in case of working themselves in. And they'll be proud of their achievements though today as Boston Hagen radios back. It's been a really good ride for the Norwegian on his birthday. Antani Sen always in front. On 18 to this first chasing group on the road. Stefano Pidazzi and Pierre Roland. Both of these guys, as it stands, still with a chance to take the man his jersey as well. But they would have to overhaul the man in front to do that. Certainly Pidazzi already took second place on that first climb today. Pidazzi comes through, takes his turn. As you just said, uh, chasing. They really want something here today. Gaining on the group of uh, Boston Hagen, I think, in Kemener. In fact, it is that group. So those guys almost done for with 15 k's to go. The leader is a kilometre in front. Look at the pace here, Sean, by Azure Desert. This is a bigger group now, but once again, you get the feeling that certainly with all the pace being put on, that some people are going to be really suffering once the road really goes uphill again. Yes, I think uh, there will be a lot of riders that start losing contact at the moment. Uh, it does kick up. Um, we can see here uh, roll on at uh, 1.17 at the moment, but then back to that uh, main bunch uh, being pulled along by AG2R, 2.45. It's hard to imagine because uh, uh, Bosenhagen was with the uh, two riders we have on our screen here just uh, you know, not, not too long ago, and to lose that amount of time, uh, it's, uh, it's difficult to see, but uh, again, that's what we're getting uh, reports that uh, this group uh, of big favourites, uh, 2.45 down, and that is a uh, substantial lead for our leader out on the road, Aradondo, but more so for Pierre Hollande because he is the fresher one. He should be the fresher one of, of the three that we have got out front, our leader on the road and the two chasers. Well, for Scarponi on the bottom right of the pitch, he's having help from both Andre Seitz, the Kazakhstani rider, and Paolo Tiralongo, one of the best domestics in the whole of the peloton over the last 10 years or so. Right side, we've got Roland. This is Arredondo, 120 on Roland and Stefano Pirazzi. 13.4 kilometres to go. 
It's funny, the hardest part of this second category climb, Sean, comes very, very close to the end, about a kilometre from the end of it, and that's at 11%, so it's still not an easy bit of climbing before we get the brief descent for around uh, two or three kilometres, and then it goes up and down, up and down all the way. It's a very gradient towards the end. A look back to the Malianors in the meantime. They were 12 minutes behind. Michael Matthews today will be saying goodbye to the pink. Could it be Domenico Pozzovivo to attack and try and take something? He is perfectly placed here, just sitting on the wheel of Mick Rogers. Behind him, the best young rider so far, Rafael Maika. Going to make that white jersey his own. Pirazzi being dropped then. Pierre Rolland striking out on his own. Not really changing that time gap at the minute. And if anything, it's growing. 121 now. Rolland, who has historical wins, fantastic wins so far in his career. Rigoberto Uran. What can he put together today? Evans shielded by uh, Samuel Sanchez to the left, the number 58 in the red and black. Steve Morabito, the Swiss to the right, the number 55. Rada Heistar still hanging on, just on the wheel of Cadell Evans, as is Ivan Basso. Malia Rosa group still waiting for a tying gap. The last check was 12 minutes and 40 seconds to uh, this group on the road. Still descending. You get the feeling they're still quite a way back. You'd expect them to be as well. Time gap to Michael Matthews today isn't that important. I can tell you it's grown 14.56. There's the reason why it isn't important. He is losing the pink jersey today. No great shakes there. We thought it was going to happen. He almost knew it was going to happen. Said as much last night and this morning. He's had a wonderful stink in, stint in pink, even. And he's almost 15 minutes behind the leader on the road. Roland, then, making up five seconds or so on Arredondo. Roland, whose big wins in France. Abdouez being one of them in the Tour de France. Sort of rider who, on his day, is a very, very special talent. Peloton behind. That Asha Desert train keeps going. It's almost been a, a, a flick switch in mentality this season for Azure Desert, hasn't it? They struggled for wins, always impressed and had a good looking lineup over the last couple of years. They took a fantastic win early on at Paris Nice. They took a couple of one dayers as well. Drone Classic with the Roman Bardet, as we see the gritted teeth of the uh, Gruppetto at the back. This one of the Gruppetti on the road, but Azure Desert looking so much stronger this year, Sean. They're having a fabulous season right from the beginning, uh, winning Palace Nice, of course, um, and uh, it's just going on. And um, when you see the company that uh, the riders there, we can see, you know, uh, three riders from AGTR on the front of the group, and of course their uh, their leader Pozzovivo, very much there at the moment. Um, when you can, you know, have uh, have that many riders in this stage of the race in such, you know, uh, great company. I think it's the morale as well. These victories, uh, it's just, you know, everybody has risen to it in the team and there's some of the riders here, you know, you'd not expect them to be up here today and the reason is that the season has just went from strength to strength for them. Ajida still, still with those three riders on the front. Montaguti, Dupont and Avuyamo all riding in support of Pozzo Vivo. This is our Colombian leader. Leader on the day, 19 minutes behind overall. No threat to Cadell Evans, who remains the man who would go into the pink jersey here. Long, long way for BMC to carry the jersey. It's only stage eight, remember. Big test on his team's resources in the coming days if he goes into pink today. Colombians always in front. On a little ring. This is Dupont, number 16. 19 behind him, Bouillamo. Bouillamo has done the job of a real strong domestic today. One thirteen to Roland. Still not getting a time gap back to this group. The last check, there were 2.40. 
but of course the pace upping has been really really strong from Azure say you would have expected to have come down considerably wouldn't you well I, I think it has to come down um, we can see out front I think uh, you know they're still battling away and uh, our leader on the road is putting up a great fight Aradundo because uh, Pierre Alon is coming out of the bunch uh, very late, so he has the advantage of you know being much fr being much fresher, but uh, still having uh, difficulty closing him down. As we can see, 114 uh, is coming down very very slowly. I thought that uh, we would see Roland really just uh, closing down on a lead on the road very very quickly, but it's not the case. And uh, it would be nice to see exactly where this group of big favourites being pulled along by AG2R because they definitely have upped the pace in the last three kilometres, four kilometres, and uh, I. Would expect that advantage to a leader on the road to you know to have uh, been coming down quite a lot. Arredondo with uh, less than two kilometers to go to the top of the penultimate climb of the day. Pierre along behind, encouragement for those out there in the picnic chairs. Team car behind, jewelry car there as well. TV motorbikes, photographers, press all got to be moved out of the way if the gap comes down. Here's Cadell Evans, virtual Maglia Rosa on the road. Naido Quintana just in front of him in the dark blue. Basso behind, as is Steve Morabito. Now, was that Sebastiano now at the back? Eleven point two kilometers to go. Constantin Sitzer is the Team Sky Rider who's just joined the chasing group. This is the Scarponi group. Losing time, getting no real gaps there yet. 60 minutes and 48 back. Michael Matthews. Last day in pink. What's it like when you lose a, a leader's jersey, Sean? Strange feeling. Well, it depends on your expectations, first of all. Um, you know, if you're hoping to hold on out there and uh, the terrain is something that you feel you can get through and uh, you're not having a great day, well, then it's, uh, it's very disappointing and it's hard, you know, to accept it. But if you're on a real big mountain stage and you know you're not a good climber, uh, and I think, uh, you know, for our, um, our pink jersey today, he was forecasting that, I think, you know, himself he was prepared that he was going to lose the jersey that was all the talk yesterday and this morning a weight off his shoulders perhaps as well well yes i think yeah he, he, he cannot you know uh, be disappointed about it because this giro as has been just uh, a fabulous one for himself and for the rica green edge team the way they have started out or oh, held the pink jersey within the team right from the beginning and he's been in there what for six seven days in uh, in pink pierre Roland. French rider for Europe Cup. One minute and 18 seconds. Really not making any inroads into Juliana Redondo at the moment. Chasing group of favourites with Ivan Basso looking very strong. Stefano Pirazzi drifting back all the way to that chasing group of favourites all the time, you feel. Another courageous ride from him. One of the much loved riders amongst the Italian public. One eleven, and you said it surprised you there, Sean. But another first category climb to come. What's your feelings now on Arredondo? Can he hold on and take the win here? Well, it looked like uh, it was going to be very difficult uh, with Pierre Roland, and when, uh, when we see Pierre Roland coming out of the bunch, that he started to close uh, close down the advantage. But now it's uh, it, it, he's just hanging there and uh, you know, hasn't been closing anything. And with this uh, with this advantage of you know over a minute for him to close down. Uh, it's looking uh, it's looking more difficult and uh, yeah, back to the um, the peloton of the group of the big favorites that's going to be an interesting one will we see some attacks from the, some of the favorites here but Arredondo is doing a fabulous ride here to be able to you know push put in this performance at this moment after being out there for such a long time well uh, one minute and four behind what is clear here is that Arredondo is going to get some sort of reward even though he may not take the stage win we will see it's looking good for him now still two minutes ahead of the peloton he's kept a decent gap there and again the peloton let's call it the group of favorites pirazzi 150 behind he's almost been caught the reward even if he doesn't get a stage win and somehow blows up on this final climb for arredondo is going to be the blue king of the mountains jersey 
He's going to take the maximum points again here at the top of the second category climb. Just one first category climb to go. That is where the points will be taken. He's 10 kilometers from the finish, still looking fairly decent to take the stage win on the day. It will be a wonderful, wonderful day and a superb win if he could pull it off. But whatever happens, he is going to get that blue jersey. Looking back to the blue jerseys of Astana, Michele Scarponi attempting to help him back. No gap to him yet. Encouragement from the car. For Scarponi here, is it a case of just trying to survive, really limit his losses and somehow miraculously make it back to that chasing group of favourites we're seeing here? Well, it's difficult to see him doing that. Um, you know, when we get on to the final climb now, um, I think uh, there will be you know, somebody who want to go in the attack. So the pace, I think, uh, is not going to uh, slow at all in this group of big favourites uh, in the group of Cat 11s and uh, the AG2R team who are doing a lot of the chasing. So for Scarponi, it looks like it's just limit your losses as much as possible today. Second category climb at Villaggio del Lago, 160 point, 169.3 k's into this stage. It's stage eight of the Giro, and we have a new leader of the King of the Mountains competition. Juliana Redondo, whether he wins the stage or not, will be wearing the blue jersey tomorrow. 9.5 k's to go. Peloton at two minutes. Stefano Pirazzi not too far away of being caught. Another good combative ride from him. And the chase behind Pierre Rolland. Again, superb to see all these crowds out on the side of the road again. You see the weather's not quite as good up here as we've had all day. A few grey clouds around. Up at well above a thousand metres here, so the temperature dips as well. But it's Saturday afternoon, it's the Giro's first day in the mountains, it's the day it takes off. And Pierre Rolland has certainly taken his challenge off as well. One minute and two behind. Uh, Aradondo, he put up a great fight. Pierre Rolland looked like he was going to have enough. Then it's, it seemed like that uh, we were going to see the Katusha rider winning uh, Moreno. But uh, all changed in the end. And as I said, Ulisi, you know, just uh, playing it cool. And that's what you've got to do in the final. If you take it up too early, as Moreno did, well, then you pay the price. And he lost 30 seconds, which is amazing. And we could see Lucy here just followed, followed, and then in the final metres uh, just goes for it and uh, just, uh, you know, easy in the end. And he's that sort of rider. He's just uh, such a punchy rider in these uphill finishes. Punchy enough, indeed. Absolutely brilliant. He wondered if he'd hang on on the end. He was there, though. And once he is there, has the beating of Robert Kizilowski. A good ride from Kizilowski. He hasn't had too much protagonism in big races, apart from winning his national championship over the last few years. So a good slam for the rest of the week, maybe, for Trek Factory Racing. Well, I think Kizilowski, uh, in the general classification, he's very much up there. He's at, you know, 2.24. He's gained some time uh, today. And uh, hopefully he can keep it going. And uh, he put in a great performance there in the final, what, five, 500 metres. Diego Lisi, two minutes 22 down, bonus seconds as well. We thought, and his team have actually said this week, that he's not riding for GC, but, well, the way he's standing at the minute, he's going to ride as long as he can for GC, I think. We will have a new leader. That will be Cadell Evans, without doubt. The winner of the stage, though, Diego Lisi. Ulisi then from Kizilovsky, six seconds back to Kelderman. Quintana with Evans, eight seconds back. Uran and Pozzovivo coming across the line with him. Micah, Aru and Heistal. They make up the top ten. 20 seconds from first to tenth. A very special, unreal stage eight of this 97th Giro d'Italia. Oh, he's getting his breath back. He looks remarkably composed to say he's just done that. A very, very special win. And we'll see him again for the second time on this year on the podium. Lampre came in after having lost their uh, leader, Chris Horner, before the race. They came in with a three-pronged attack. They've already got two stage wins. And as an Italian team at home, that's going to make them relax into the race as well. Well, it's a great, uh, a great performance. Uh, two stage wins already in the first week of racing. You could not expect more.
What a win. Grandissima vittoria from uh, Diego Lisi. Absolutely special. Again, looks behind just to make sure it's his. Kudos to Kiselowski. Good ride, and it is nice to see him riding up there towards the end. Overall standing looks like this. Evans leads by 57 seconds already to Rigoberto Uran. Rafael Meiker in third, and Sean, a look at that. You can see the other day already having a big effect. 57 seconds after stage eight. Uh, Here's Cadell, the new Maglia Rosa. into the pink jersey. You couldn't have possibly imagined being in such a good position by this point in the race coming into it, could you? Um, you know, you have hopes of what you can do in the Giro, and it's been a, a really um, a difficult Giro, not for climbs and time trials like we'd expect to, to, to win the Giro with, but for all these other reasons that, um, that makes the Giro such a, such a, a dramatic race. But um, no, we're in a good position at the moment. But uh, obviously today we saw um, a hard stage, but all the contenders right there. And now we get to the mountains. I think we'll see a, a different kind of racing. Just talk us through the final climbs day. You had some strong help from your team throughout the day and, of course, from Morabito towards the end. Yeah, of course, Steve Stout was really the man of man of the day for us. So the team were great all day, but he was there uh, all the way in the finish there. I think um, I see I see the group mostly um, a lot of tired legs, but more from the not so much from the shorter stage today, but of course the long stages that we've had so far to get here, where um, we all started the stage a little bit fatigued today, and I think they showed in the final. Goodell, thank you very much. Thank you. BMC with two men in the top four. Steve Morabito moves into fourth place on the general classification at the uh, Giro d'Italia. Look at that image. Former world champion, winner of the Tour de France. It's been 12 years since he wore the pink jersey. Today, we'll wear it as a very, very strong leader and a big contender for this Giro d'Italia. 57 seconds. Puts him as a big, strong favourite now, Sean, at this Giro. Well, he's definitely in the, in, the, in the driving seat. But again, with this Giro, as we talked about, such a difficult final week. Um, it's looking good, but uh, a long road to the finish. The raised arms, the scream of victory of this man, Diego Ulissi. The saviour of Italian cycling a couple of days ago. Times that by two. Wonderful day for Italian fans, and here he is. Uh, Diego, second stage win of this race. This one, though, much harder than the last one you win. Did you expect to be in with a chance of going for victory today? Wow. I'm absolutely euphoric for this uh, wonderful day. Well, today I really didn't expect to win. Of course, it was a difficult race today, just because I knew that we were talking about climbs that are really too hard for my characteristics. Carpegna especially. But of course, I'm really, really happy. Really happy. Tell you what, if he carries on winning, he's going to have to learn some English. The world will want to hear from him. So he's won today. We have more medium mountains for you tomorrow. This is his win. And you can see the next chapter on the Giro. Stage nine before the next rest day, Lugo to Sestola tomorrow. 172 kilometers, similar length. A lot of climbing again. It's going to be another big day. Who's recovered from today? Who has it for tomorrow? California tonight again, Santa Clarita to Pasadena, 143 kilometers. That is at 10.30 Central European time. Half past nine in the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. From Sean and I, goodbye.